Welcome to Big Science. We start with ESP. For over a century, parapsychology has struggled to be taken seriously as a science. Its claims haven't been helped by notorious cases of fraud and a clear lack of rigor. For good reasons, telepathy has remained on a par with tarot cards and Ouija boards. So when this happened this month, a scientific journal, and a respectable one, prints a major review of parapsychology research and suggests that there might be firm statistical evidence for ESP, you know something is up. It looks like a New Age techno trip. In fact, it's science. In a parapsychology lab, a volunteer is taking part in an experiment which aims at the root of our most basic assumptions about physics and biology. The goal is to find out whether human physical functions can be affected by other people's thoughts. The electrodes on his fingers monitor the conductivity of his skin, a standard test to measure relaxation and arousal. In another part of the building, a sender watches the monitor screen and tries to change the way the volunteer responds. Direct mental interaction with living systems is a fashionable area in parapsychology research. In another series of experiments, they're investigating that common sensation, the feeling that someone, somewhere, is staring at you. At the University of Hertfordshire, in Richard Wiseman's lab, another volunteer is wired up to another monitor. The electrodes on the fingers are to detect the changes in conductivity which might accompany that prickly feeling on the back of the neck when you feel someone is staring at you. The idea is to find out whether extrasensory perception plays a part in everyday experiences. Okay, can you just give me a number between one and seven? Four. This is just a pilot study, lacking stringent controls. But parapsychologists relish the kind of questions it raises. However, conventional psychologists disapprove of their colleagues who seek paranormal explanations for sensations which could simply be due to quite normal stimuli. I don't think parapsychology is even now a respectable science. We have excellent methods, very good experiments, quite a lot of good people working in the field, and yet somehow it remains beyond the pale, disreputable, looked down on by psychology. In the past, skeptics had good reason to doubt parapsychology. Early experiments like this one from the 30s to find out whether a subject could influence falling dice provided few safeguards against manipulation and fraud. Even if the investigators were honest, their research needed stricter controls. You would expect a score of five by chance, but you have a score of 11. And some impressive results were later discovered to be little more than fraud. In the 40s, Dr. Samuel Soule of London University amazed scientists around the world with the results of his ESP experiments. Soule asked a clairvoyant called Basil Shackleton Liar. to guess the symbols on cards randomly selected by a viewer in another room. The experiment was set up so that no one should know in advance which card was to be chosen. Giraffe. Chance alone would have given Shackleton a hit rate of one in five. In the event, he scored one in three. The odds against this being due to chance were billions upon billions to one. But years later, one of Sol's assistants revealed that she had seen the scientist changing numbers on the score sheets. Skeptics have derided most parapsychology as a catalogue of deceit and delusion. I think it's important that parapsychologists understand about the psychology of deception. In the past, individuals have come, claimed strong psychic ability, and then it's turned out that they're fraudulent. That's bad news for parapsychology, it's bad news for the general public. Understanding the techniques of deception is now an essential part of parapsychology training. Researcher Richard Wiseman is a psychologist and professional conjurer. If we can understand about deception, we can start to counter it in our research. Uh, part of that research uh, would involve people coming along, like this individual here, who claimed macro PK, who claimed the ability uh, to influence physical objects with his mind. Grab the end like that, and we'll just uh, see if we can make it. No, Dr. Wiseman has investigated the claims of many self-proclaimed psychics and the methods they use. Here, he's trying to test whether this spoon bender is using paranormal powers or simply sleight of hand. Parapsychologists have to eliminate all trace of trickery if they want to be taken seriously. <laughs> the 
parapsychologists are being good scientists. They're trying to hammer everything in place. They're trying to get the right control. So at the end of the day, we get an effect. We can be fairly certain there's something unusual going on. We're not being fooled by others or fooling ourselves. And the last 100 years or so have seen an increase in that methodological rigor. We're now approaching the time when we really are running very tight experiments and, and starting to get interesting results. This month, research from Edinburgh University challenges the skeptics with results which are statistically astonishing. The Gansfield technique for investigating extrasensory perception isolates a subject, the receiver, in a darkened room. All she sees is reddish light. All she hears is white noise. Elsewhere, a random selection of video clips is being watched by a sender. The receiver then describes the images which float into her mind. I'm getting a sense of movement, like weeds, grasses, and the shape. It's kind of hard to describe, like a pyramid standing on its apex. Researcher Deborah Delanoy tape records the receiver's thoughts, and at the end of the test, plays back all the clips and asks the receiver to select the ones closest to her impressions. Generally speaking, if nothing but chance was happening in these studies, you'd expect people to guess the right target, if you will, 25% of the time. And over many, many, many different experiments com conducted by many different experimenters in many different labs throughout the world, what we're finding is an approximate overall hit rate of 33%. In other words, that's significantly higher than what would be expected by chance alone. Thirty-three percent may not sound much more than twenty-five, but the odds against this happening by chance alone over a long series of experiments are a hundred thousand billion to one. This month, the prestigious Psychology Bulletin publishes an analysis of over three hundred experiments which claims to answer every criticism leveled by the skeptics. For parapsychologists, it could be the dawning of scientific respectability. But extraordinary claims demand extraordinary proof. And parapsychologists are still wary of claiming that the research proves the existence of ESP. I don't think we could be said to have a final extraordinary proof. That's one of the reasons why I don't set my own acceptance of it at 100% yet. What impresses me about lines of research like the Gonsfeld is that not only are the results getting to be more consistent, more positive, uh, with different researchers uh, finding uh, similar outcomes. But also, when you get the Gonsfeld effect, it seems to show a kind of consistent internal effect. The results have also impressed skeptics who are familiar with this kind of research. Dr. Susan Blackmore is a parapsychologist, but has been outspoken in her criticism of some Gansfield work. I've long been dubious about Gansfeld because I've done Gansfeld experiments myself and they failed. I haven't been able to replicate other people's claims. I found things wrong when I visited other people's labs. There's, there's things been going wrong with the procedures that make me think, well, it's, it's that and not the paranormal. And yet here at last we seem to have a well-conducted experiment which, if it has all gone the way it's described in the literature, then it looks like a claim for, for the paranormal. The only reason I'm not still at 100% is that I'm well aware, as a trained psychologist, that there are many, many highly complex, oftentimes extremely difficult to spot artifacts that might be producing even the results that we've been getting right now. We just simply feel we have plugged more holes than have ever been plugged before. The evidence has never been stronger, but are the skeptics going to be convinced? I think this is the best evidence we've got for ESP. It is really making me wonder. It's going tick, 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 you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is such a thing as ESP. I doubt it, but it's certainly good enough evidence to make me sit up and think.